Hey, what's going on guys? Tanmaya for Simple Snippets and in today's video tutorial, we'll be talking about how to take input from users in Java. So this is going to be a quick practical video and the reason why I'm covering this topic is because the way we take input in Java programming is not really straightforward compared to what we do in C or C++. So if you're coming from C or C++ background, the way we take input is pretty straightforward. We just use the printf or scanf in terms of C programming or C in or C out in terms of C++ programming. But in Java, since everything is in objects and classes, the way we go about taking input is slightly indirect. So yeah, this is going to be a quick video tutorial wherein we talk about how to take input. So if you've been following this entire core Java tutorial playlist, we've pretty much covered around 26 or 27 videos so far, but we haven't really talked about how to take input from users. And now that you have a good idea about classes and objects, because we've covered them in the previous video tutorials, let's talk about how to take input. So quickly open up your NetBeans ID. As you can see, I have already opened up my NetBeans ID. So the first way, so basically there are two ways to take input. So the first way is to use a scanner object. Okay. So scanner is a class which is provided inbuilt in Java. So we have to create an object and then use one of its method to take input from users. So this is how you go about it. Let me just type it out. I'm going to say scanner S C A N N E R. And if I hit control space, I'm already presented with the three different options. We are going to use the first one that is java.util. So it's inside this package. And when I click that, you can see there is an import statement that is added by default. So it's java.util.scanner. So it's inside this package and the scanner is the class name. So I'm going to say SCR, which is the name of my object. Then I'm going to instantiate it by using the new keyword. So new scanner and inside the constructor, we're going to say system dot in. Okay. So let me just explain. So I just created an object of scanner class. Basically it's an inbuilt class, which we can use to take input and inside the constructor I'm passing system dot in now system dot in represents the default input method for this system and the default input for this is the keyboard, right? So the input stream that is going to be taking input is being attached to the keyboard. So the console, when we type in the default methodology to take input in a console is the keyboard, right? So that's what it represents. So let me just now create an integer variable. I'm going to say int x. Then let me just print out a message. I'm going to say system dot out dot print ln enter a number and to take input, I'm going to say x is equal to scr dot next int. Okay. So what just happened? So I just created integer variable. Now I'm, I said we are going to use the method of this object, right? So the method is going to be next int. And the reason why we're using next int is because we have an integer variable. So it has multiple methods like next byte, next int, next short, next double and so on and so forth. So depending upon what kind of input you want, you can use it accordingly. So I'm going to say next int. And then lastly, I'm just going to quickly print out the message saying number value is and I'm just going to append the X integer using the plus operator. Just save this. And if I just run this, it will ask me for a number. I'm going to say 11 and there you go. Number value is 11. So pretty straightforward, right? Just that we had to create this object to take input. Okay. So this was method number one. Now you can take multiple types of input also. So let's say I want to take a string variable. So I'm going to say string str. And then I'm going to say str is equal to scr dot. There is a method named next line. Okay. So it's going to read out the entire line that you type out in the console. So I'm going to save this. If I run this, okay, I, I did not type in a message or anything, but the output is still running. Let me just first stop this before taking input. I'm going to say system dot out dot print ln enter a string. And then after taking input, I'm going to print it out. So I'm going to say string value is and then just append the string. So just save this, run this and entering the string simple snippets. And if I hit enter, you can see string value is simple snippets. So that's how you take a string. Now, if you want to take a double, you can say next double. If you want to take a Boolean value, you can say next Boolean and there are multiple methods available. Okay. So this was method number one. Now the method number two is using a buffered reader class. So again, this is an inbuilt class, 
let me just first type it out and then I'll explain to you line by line. So if I erase this out, you can see this line turns yellow because we now don't need the scanner variable. So I can just erase this out as well. So I'm going to say buffered reader and if I hit control space, you can already get this and it's inside the java.io package. It's going to say br is equal to new buffered reader. Now the way we go about creating this is slightly complex. So you can see your multi-step process inside the constructor of buffered reader. It is expecting an object of input stream reader. So the buffered reader basically is an object which deals with entire stream of data and that stream of data is or can be taken using an object of input stream. So or input stream reader. So I'm going to say new input stream reader. So again, input stream reader is an inbuilt class in Java and inside the constructor of input stream reader, I'm going to say system.in. Okay. So system.in represents the default input method. That is the keyboard, right? So that has to be there. Now input stream reader is basically an inbuilt class which expects stream of data and that that is what is expected by the buffer reader class. So you can see we have pa we are passing multiple objects inside the constructors. So for the constructor of buffer reader, I'm passing an object of input stream reader. So I just instantiate it inside the constructor itself over here and inside the in input stream reader constructor, I'm passing system dot in. So that's why I said it's a little complex, but after doing that, the further steps are pretty much the same. So you say system dot out dot print ln enter a string. Okay. I'm going to say string str is equal to now again, we are going to use a method of this buffer reader object. We cannot directly use br. We have to use some method to take input and the method is br dot read line. So this will read the entire line that you enter on the console. Now you can see it's throwing an error over here. It is saying unreported exception. So just hit this bulb and you can see add throws clause for Java IO exception. So it's something related to the exception handling part, which you haven't yet talked about. We'll talk about that in further tutorials right now. Just hit this and you can see public static word mean throws IO exception was added right now. You don't need to worry about that. Anyways, now I just want to print out whatever line we took in as input. So I'm going to say string value is colon and just attach str. Let's save this. Let's try to run this. It's saying enter a string. I'm going to say Tanmay Sakpal. That is my name. So there you go. String value is Tanmay Sakpal, which was printed. So basically br.readline, what it does is it returns a string format. So if you want to take integer format, there is no direct function. We have to convert the string to integer format. Okay. So this is probably a drawback of buffer data that it does not have inbuilt methods to take different, different data types like what we did in scanner. So let's say you have an integer int x and you want to take input from the buffer reader object itself. So you want to say br dot read line. So right now it will throw you an error. Okay. Because it's not compatible. You can see incompatible types error. So I'm going to say first enter a number over here and I'm going to say value is and I'm going to append x over here. But in order to resolve this, we have to perform type casting or conversion. So in order to do that, we have again inbuilt method named integer dot parse int. So integer is basically a class. I'm going to say integer, which is an inbuilt class dot. If I say par automatically, the intelligence pops up. It's saying parse int and it is expecting a string inside it, right? So if I just erase this string and if I just copy and paste, cut and paste this br dot readline inside this parse int method, it will work perfectly fine, right? So the parse int method takes a string. So we are taking that string from the user itself using br dot read line and then it converts that to an integer because of this method of this class. Okay. So this is basically a static method because it does not need an object, right? So we've already talked about static methods and static variables in Java. So you can see a link in the description or on the top in terms of cards. If you don't know what are static methods and static variables. So yeah, this is going to perform that conversion. Again, this is all inbuilt method. Just save this. And let's try to run this. It's saying enter a number. I'm going to say 11 and there you go. Value is 11. So now it's working perfectly fine. Similarly, if you want to have a double, you will have a double dot pass double. Let me just see if we have that. I don't exactly remember it. So I'll say double and to do that. Is there a method named 
yes we do have that so we have double dot parse double right so let's save this and let's try this i'm gonna say 1.3456 if i hit enter the value is 1.3453 correct right so there you go this was how you use the buffer reader object to take an input and then if you want you can convert it dif in different types using the parse double or parse methods which are inbuilt again provided by java itself and yeah these were the two different methods in which you can take input from users now there are some theoretical differences and the way they work that is the difference between scanner and buffer reader class and let me just read out a few and if you want to actually really get into a lot of theory and actually understand what the difference is what i'll do is i'll drop some links in the description or in fact what i'll do is i'll create an article on our official simple snippet dot tech website and you'll probably find that in the description as well so just to give you a little bit of theoretical explanation buffer reader is synchronous while scanner is not so basically buffer reader should be used if you are working with multiple threads so this is when multiple threads or multi threading comes into picture so we all know that in java multi threading is supported by default so buffer reader has significantly larger buffer memory than scanner scanner has little buffer 1 kb as opposed to buffer reader that is 8 kb and buffer reader is a bit faster as as compared to scanner because scanner does parsing of input data and buffer reader simply read sequence of characters so this was a little bit of difference which i got from different sources but if you really want to geek out and read a lot about these two and actually find out the real difference then i'll drop some links in the description and you can go check that out and yeah this was it a little short video on how to take input from user in java that's it for this video guys i hope you like this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and if you haven't yet subscribed make sure you subscribe to this channel and i'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial peace